to Table Talk with Brenda Perryman, and here are my two co-hosts. I'm happy to see them. We've been on hiatus for a minute. Yeah. Um, the, the coach. Yeah, uh, Daryl Buchanan, head coach, Southfield a and And you had a good season, seeing this this year, first season. Yeah, yeah. Um, was able to, you know, turn some things around. You know, it seemed like uh, the kids for years had been not quite playing at the level they needed to. Right. And, uh, you know, we came in with a different mindset, a different attitude, and, you know, things really turned around. We ended up going 14 and 8 this year. Which was great because last year they won two. Two games. Two games. Two games. All right. Bravo, right. 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 my man. Thank you. Okay, Ellis. Ellis Adele, a retirement planning specialist at Healy Wealth Management. What if you already retired and didn't plan well? Is he ready for what comes next? Yeah. <laughs> Do you all <laughs> stress? <laughs> oh, so you all gonna take people like that, huh? We, listen, I will meet with pretty much anybody um, and try and see if we can't move things around. You, you know, some people pay their bills wrong. Hmm. I know that sounds simplistic, but yeah, some people actually pay their bills wrong. So there's a right way to pay your bills. Even. There's a reason really? why you can have a, you can have twins and work the same job. One's ends up a millionaire, that one's broke throughout their whole life. Why? One knows how to pay their bills, the other one doesn't know how to pay their bills. Same money. Same genetic. Hmm. Well, I've been coming to see you. Yeah, so really. <laughs> <laughs> financial literacy probably is the biggest problem in America right now. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Literacy. I agree full heartedly. Like their own, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Literacy, right. period. Yeah. Well, I call it financial illiteracy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had quite a week. In fact, quite a 12 months as far as black men are concerned and the law, and um, which have sent us into different stereotypical things, the stereotype. Gail King, she interviewed R. Kelly and the two women who stayed with him this week. And the first time I saw the interview a couple of days ago, the first part of the interview on on CBS, the woman, her co-host, I forgot her name right now, but her co-host said, I was so afraid for you, so afraid that he would um, hurt you, and all of this, and I just ended up yelling at the, pe- the, the television, shut up, it's that fear of the black man. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, I mean, that's a trope that they just bring up, you know, at every turn, I mean, it's, you know, I say it's rough being the boogeyman. I mean, because that just follows us into, you know, everything that we do. I mean, you know, if if, if you're too assertive and you see people shrink, I'm going, wait a minute, I'm just talking. I mean, it's not, not like, you know, I'm all of a sudden even raising my voice. But, you know, there's this mindset that somehow, you know, we're inherently violent and that, you know, uh, we're sexual beasts. And so those things just, you know, play out, you know, just all throughout history. And, 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 I mean, if I was sitting there and I was Gail, because I've never been Gail, yeah, but if I was Gail, I would have definitely said I've never felt threatened by our county. I'm not going to allow myself to be a part of the villainization of this individual. I want you to do a job. I can't control that person's emotion. As a matter of fact, the fact that he emoted says I did my job. Exactly. But I never felt threatened right. by our county. I felt that this was a person who acted out. He released some emotion that he had. had well, yeah, some of it seemed, you know, I I was an acting teacher. Well, I said acted out. Yeah. <laughs> That's a <laughs> well, word, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, there, there's so much to kind of unravel as far as this is concerned because for so many years we've heard rumors about our Kelly. Right, absolutely. And uh, a lot of people didn't want to believe him. You know, I'm not saying whether I believe them or not, but the point is that we've been hearing the rumors. It seems like, do you think, owe it to the Me Too movement? What do you owe it to that all of this is starting to hit the fan now? Well, let's just say, you see, we heard rumors about Liberace. We heard rumors oh, about... Yes. Yeah, we did. John. We heard rumors about a lot of things, and you're going to hear rumors about people. Now, what caused the situation that we're in with Bill Cosby? just keep naming the individuals who are being taken down by this, and then you can name the non-African-American individuals who are still walking around and nothing ever happened. 
So the challenge is, why do we continue? Are we going to continue to feed into what you consider and I consider an attack mode? Are we going to start saying, hold up, hold up, until justice is equal, then why is it that we all start putting a spotlight on just African Americans? When Oprah puts a spotlight on African Americans, when Gail puts a spotlight on African Americans, these are African Americans putting a spotlight on African Americans. It's an assignment, but I go into every assignment, like meeting with every client. I go into every client with an open mind. But it also means I have questions that I want to ask that gives them opportunity to express themselves and defend themselves. I'm not going to constantly put them under attack mode because what does that do? If you put a dog in a corner, he has no choice but to bark. You can't expect him to stay calm when you don't corner him. So I think that there's some responsibility on the interviewer to realize what is this interview going to do for our race? I don't know what to do with race. They say that, but there's a lot of focus when you live in America on being black or white, mm-hmm. Hispanic, or right. something else. And, you know, I, I agree I agree with you, but then there's also the, you know, just the level of, you know, uh, honesty that we have to have about, you know, the behaviors of some people in our communities that have been victimizing other members of our community. And, you know, so, you know, where do you draw that line? I mean, we hear the rumors. Now, you might hear a rumor, but then when you hear it repeatedly, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, when there's smoke, there's fire. Um, there, there could be, be fire, be. because you told me about, I remember the story you told me about how somebody was talking about one of your clients, and or they were being mistaken, your, your client was being mistaken for someone else. Right. And I don't remember the exact story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. I remember what you're talking about. So, and it can happen. Now, let's just say I traveled with a person for 20 years, and I never saw them display a behavior that was not what I call not a natural behavior. And then I, if, if I indeed hear rumors or get phone calls asking me how does that individual handle these things, that I, 20 years of traveling, sometimes 200 days out the year and I never saw this display, then I'm going to defend the fact that I never saw that. Right. And I got 10 years of travel and, you know, as close as you can get. However, I never saw this. So that means an individual had two distinct lives. Or it may not be true. Or it could have been true prior to me, but not during the time period in which I met that individual. Or during the time period that you were traveling with that individual. Right. So, I mean... There, there, there are a lot of ways. Why, why don't you tell them what ended up happening? Well, I don't know. I, I think we talked too much about it already. Right, so. right, right. Well, <laughs> okay, I won't, I won't, I won't. But I'm not saying it was a mistaken identity. I'm not, uh, I'm not an R. Kelly fan, as a matter of fact. In fact, uh, Adrienne Hampton, she did the, uh, the series on him, and there were women who said that. And so I have to believe something. You know, but I, as a person interviewing someone involved, I'm not going to, like Oprah sat up, and she just took hook, line, and sinker with these two young men said, and she said, you're right, and this and that and the other thing. But Oprah, a lot of people don't realize that she can be very duplicitous, very, very duplicitous. And we've seen it throughout her career. Throughout her career. Throughout her career. And it's just based on what, what is she trying to achieve. Now, bear in mind, you know, everybody's selling. Everybody's selling something. The first thing you sell is who? Yourself. And then you start leveraging that to sell other things. So everybody comes to the table with an agenda. And because everyone comes with an agenda, you you just got to make sure, are they, is their agenda aligned with your agenda? Or is their agenda not aligned? We watched the interview, R. Kelly. Well, the first thing that I thought of was, if I have a 13-year-old daughter, who's not coming home, or who's, who, the concert lets out at 9 o'clock, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning, I have to hurry from her. First of all, why can I drop her off and pick her up? Right. Right. What have I done to protect my child? So, you know, this is complicated, because there's a lot of people at, at fault here. But it also, I think we could be talking to my mother now, who's 80 years old, and she will tell you that she knows people who got raped, who 
men tried to approach them, and they were living in the house with them, but it may not have been their child. It may have been a niece or a nephew. Mm-hmm. So this whole human behavior understanding thing has been going on since they were man and woman. Does a 13-year-old have any responsibility? If they show up, first of all, if you and I wanted to go and, 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 and just meet our Kelly, what are the chances that we're going to get there? Right. Just you and I. Just shake the brother's hand. Unless we go bail him out of jail. And then he'd be not happy. Then he'd shake our hand. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's a handshake worth $100,000. <laughs> right? So what I'm saying is, is that if my mother was sitting here and we are having a conversation about rape, molestation, things like that, we will know that it happened throughout history. Now, do I understand why some men are attracted to young, 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 young women? And some men are only attracted to older, older, older women? Do I understand why some women are attracted to little boys? Do I understand why some women are attracted to women? Some men are attracted to men. I don't understand it. And I'm not a psychologist. But I will say this. Throughout human history, that has been the case. What do we do to protect those individuals who need protecting? As a parent, the only thing I can do is be watchful of my child. But at some point, my child's going to make a decision. If they help, they're going to make their own decisions. And at that point, how do I protect that child? How do I protect and support that child? Because you can also do a lot of damage, you know, by, uh, you know, getting too involved in some of the choices. I mean, I think about some of the young people who have, you know, uh, who are gay. And when they come out to their parents, I mean, we've had students thrown out of their, you know, thrown out of their home. We had a young lady that was homeless because she was thrown out because she was gay. Now, is that good parenting? No. Was that the right thing for that for the individual? No, not at all. And so, but here here's the thing: I see the responsibility lying on so many. Okay, the young lady, she's 13 years old. How does she even get to get up in a place with R. Kelly, Thank number you. one? Yes. Number two, we have R. Kelly, who should be more responsible, but ends up in many ways being called a predator, and he has some predatory um, he has some predatory nuances. Also, on the tape, they say that he even says the girl is 14. Well, that's the case, but... That's true, though. How did he get out of that crime the first time, 10 years ago? Because, because, remember, they said the parents got up there and they said, oh, no, it's not my daughter. And, you know, now the attorney that got him off, you know, I was listening to Tom Jordan. He's going back and saying, oh, he was guilty as hell. Yeah, yeah, but that's attorney-client privilege. Is that true? Well, can attorney actually come out and say that? Well, without slander and everything else. The guy, the guy has got terminal cancer, so he doesn't even care anymore. So, so, I mean, if they were to, you know, come after him, he says, I have nothing else to lose. He did his job as his attorney. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, guy yeah. who gets the murder off. Right. But then turn around and say he really did it. Right, and it's double jeopardy. It's interesting how... Uh, I uh, tell he said he, he tried to, to he, he said he tried to double, double jeopardy, jeopardy me. me. Yes, <laughs> double jeopardy me. And um, he but, kept but you know, it's not like if you okay. So in one instance, you know, you get you know found found not guilty of that crime. That doesn't give you a get out of jail free card for the rest of your life to go well, and commit absolutely. those crimes against other victims. Well, the thing is, he didn't deny it. He said, "I beat." I beat that guy. I beat the guy. So let, let me just say this here. I don't know whether R. Kelly is innocent or guilty. We're talking today about a case that's going to play itself out in court. We're going to find out whether he's innocent or guilty later on. All uh, we're talking about is the behaviors that led to the situation right. on behalf of R. Kelly as well as the young victims right. that occurred. So that's what we're discussing. Right. Right. How, do you, how do you protect, if you're watching, how do you protect your children from being in this situation? Well, first of all, you don't allow your children to be around you. But, yeah, how do you protect them? I was a rebellious child, a uh, teenager. You know, I thought my mother was trying to thwart my life, not let me grow. And I ran away from home. And, but it was in February, so you I came back. I came back. Yeah. <laughs> and back. I golly, that was hard. But you know the things. But there was. I. I think 
I know I wouldn't have gone but so far anyway. Because I knew right and wrong. So at 13, did you, did you have passed for sixth grade? I was just tall. I was like, at 13, I was like 5'9", but I was still kind of skinny. Okay, so um, could you have passed for 16? Probably. Right. And by 16, could you have passed for 19? Probably. You saw my 16-year-old. Yeah, I saw yeah. Mm-hmm. You could have passed for 21, that's it. <laughs> so with that in mind, I'm just trying to paint a picture here. There are thousands of athletes throughout all the different sports who've been with thousands of people who they thought was of age, yeah. many of which probably was underage, but I don't know any guy who looks at a fine woman and says, oh, come back to see me when you're 21. I know one guy who did that. <laughs> so, but very few people would ever do that. Yeah. But that's the moral compass that we're trying to go out yes, and say. Yes, yes, we are. The next asking is that you have to have a moral compass as well. And know that you as a black man or black woman, because the black and women predators also, that you will not be treated the same. You will not be given the same leniency or lack of publicity. I mean, Ron Weinstein is a horrible, is a horrible person. Yes. And he'll, when will he go to court? I don't know. They do. I don't know. None of us know. And he did some horrible things. It's about some credible people who said he did them. But he's, what, innocent until proven guilty. And he has enough money to file en- enough motions to keep him out of jail for years. Yeah, okay. That's why the system is not fair. The system is set up. The, the system is set up for poor people to go to jail. The wealthier you are, the harder it is for you to go to jail. Well, case in point, Paul oh, Manafort, I mean, Paul Manafort yeah. got a little less than four years in jail, and here a woman who voted. Uh, I, and she was on probation. She right. was on probation, and she voted, and because she was on probation, she was not supposed to. And so she gets five years you know, right. for voting, and this guy has uh, committed millions, billions of dollars in fraud, and he gets 47 months. Not even four years. That's why I say the system is not fair. Right. Well, the system isn't fair, but knowing that the system isn't fair, shouldn't that affect your moral compass, too? I mean, I mean, do you think that people are going to go through life and not tell anything that you've done? No, somebody's going to tell. That's, let me say this here. When, when everybody's 21 and you're young and you're equal and you meet a person at a club and y'all look up, no big deal. But if three years later you become a multi-millionaire, not become a billionaire, and all of a sudden it wasn't consensual. There's something wrong with that. But some people are saying, oh, I'm going to get paid because if I file this suit. So that's why... It, the moral compass goes both ways. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways. But a lot of people will try and find a way to hit their lottery. And for some people, this is their lottery. Mm-hmm. And they accept the fact that only I'm going to get paid is this, not realizing that even if you get $10 million, you're going to be broke probably in six months because you're not mentally <coughs> working out with that money. Uh, we look, you have the President of the United States right now who's been accused of many things, and he is president of the United States. He has said many things. He's been accused by women of many things, and he's still president of the United States. And and friend of a convicted pedophile. And there are also uh, allegations, you know, about his involvement with, you know, that pedophile down in Florida. And, I mean, there are plenty of pictures of them. They talk about, you know, how great a friendship they had. And Is this Epstein or whatever? Uh, F- yeah, I think so, Epstein. Yeah. Uh, uh, down in Florida. Right, right. Who, who has the young women. And DaCosta, Deca- isn't that the, uh, he was attorney general at the time. This oh, is right, one of, right. This is one of the cabinet members. He so defended, yeah, yeah, he defended this guy. Right. And so all of that was, you know, now that's being looked upon as a quid pro quo for, you know, you took care of my friend, and so now I'm going to take care of you and give you a cabinet position. And so, I mean, everything everything about, you know, that whole cabal, you know, is, is somehow 
there's a bunch of grifters in there, everybody's trying to make money. But that's another story. But it goes back to moral compass. Because some people think they create the moral compass. And other people have an actual belief system. So, like, for example, you mentioned about the number of high school students who are coming out to their day and their parents are putting them out of house and trying to get them. What created the system that would cause them, you know, or what system, what does a parent have to believe to not support their child? They grew up in a Christ, Judeo-Christian system where that, that wasn't necessarily the case, but we found more gays in church than any place else. Mm-hmm. If we're going to, you know, just be yeah. honest, <laughs> right? Because the church actually accepted them when others pushed them away. Right. There's a reason why. Jesus accepted them when nobody else would. Because even if you look at the people who, you know, were part of his entourage, they were not, they were people that were cast away. So, you know, this holier than thou attitude that exists in, in current evangelical, you know, thought is something that just goes against all biblical teachings anyway. Right. So now, we are all parents, and if a child came and said that I'm gay, because of where we are today, we'd probably be more accepting than we would have 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. However, it still would be a struggle. And some of the parents are struggling. But what happens if you push your child out, out on the street and tell them to fend for themselves? You really stretch your back on your child. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's not going to change the child's it's mind. Change the mind. Uh, 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 right, on who they think they believe they are. They're going to look for love in other places. Mm-hmm. And you know, nobody wakes up and just says, uh, I think I want to try, you know, sleeping with a man today. I mean, I mean, in, in my entire life, it's like, it's never occurred to me that, you know, so I know that, you know, people don't turn gay. They don't, you know, say, make a decision to be gay. You are gay. And there's no decision to be made about that. So for you to, you know, uh, put your child out or castigate them for, you know, their orientation. I mean, they were born that way. So, you know, you are actually going against what you created. You know, this is your child. Let's let's look at the two young women who live with our account. They, did you see any of their interviews? I mean, very defensive about him. They love him. They're in this situation where, well, Gail King tried to Said, how is this working? And they said, well, we watch television together. We watch movies together. Well, we we together. Yeah, we go to amusement park. And they said, that told me a lot right there that right. amusement right. Park, yeah. park is you. How old are you, really? And um, But she said, I'm not talking about that necessarily. Gail said right. that. She's, she was trying to lose. How does it work sexually? Mm-hmm. Do you have, are you with him one night? You're with him the other night? And the girl said, uh, that's my sex life, and I don't share that with you. That's my personal life, and, mm-hmm. uh, and you as a woman would not mm-hmm. share your yes. personal life. I, I respect you. I respected that. that. Because, I mean, here we were talking about someone, there was a rumor, and I said, I've said enough about it. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you got to yeah. protect. Now, I can't speak for you, Ms. Fairman, because you've been always a wonderful, upstanding lady. But have you had two girlfriends at the same time at any point in your life? No! <laughs> oh. Just thought I'd ask. But <laughs> not in the same venue. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that day. Yeah. Did you? Uh, yeah. The short answer. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Same venue. Same venue. Same venue. Same venue. Are you talking about two at the same time? Yes. Okay, two at the same time. I mean, yes. I dated two people because otherwise it's monogamy. If it's monogamy, it might as well be marriage. Right. So you date to figure out what you like and what you don't like. That's the dating process. Now, I'm full disclosure now. I told the ladies, I'm already dating somebody. So if we go out, just know I'm dating someone. And it was like, well, let's go out and see. If we, if we have the chemistry, we might connect. That's yeah, how I yeah, and really, that's, that's all part of the, the selection process. I mean, like you said, you find out what you like and what you don't like. Okay. Um, there are parts of a person's personality that, you know, fit with, you know, uh, with yours. But then at the same time, do you have similar goals? Okay. Uh, how many times have people gotten married and then find out that the other partner doesn't want to have children? Okay. So you didn't really go through the whole process and really, you know. You bet. Uh, it's about 
it's vetting. We say dating, but it's vetting. Uh, if you are, if you if you have to have three things, if you have to identify three qualities that you want in a mate, one would, be, one would definitely be someone you can communicate with, that you can have a conversation with, because as humans, we need to communicate. Yeah. Another would be someone who could take care of you if you're sick on your deathbed, and you know that that person loves you enough to stand by you and be there for you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then it needs to be good, you know, during a period where we are into sexual abuse, it needs to be good sexual chemistry. So, but then something else, you know, somebody, so, somebody that gets your corny jokes and laughs. Okay. Well, that's so, part of communication. Yeah. Communication right. and friendship. I think friendship has there a lot is. to do with it because the sexual urges start wearing oh, down. Yes, oh, are yes. so many things that are not there, but we, as you get older. Yeah. Like because when you're, when you're 21, you want right them to right. look a certain way. When you're 81, they don't quite have to look the same, right? Right. So that well, you know, sometimes in your eyes, they could they look, still look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah so, so but what we're doing is just to kind of talk about what you want from an individual that you're going Absolutely. to spend time with. And quality time. I remember dating a young lady who had, was phenomenal. We met when I had the flu. And she was, she was a phenomenal caregiver. But we didn't have other chemistry. She was, you know, I've met people who the chemistry was off the chain. I heard the Star Spangled Banner play. Boom. You know, but there was no conversation. Mm. You know, I know that when a girl says to you, you know, I don't know if I could, could really date and fall in love with you because you sound like an intellect, and I'm not an active dimension. I, that's just not my thing. You accept her at a word, right? Right. And you get moved. Right. Well, we have relationship experts on first uh, show, and I was talking about a couple, a man I know, he's a widower now, he's not old, but he's a widower, he and his wife are married maybe about 25, 30 years, and she passed away, but they dated from high school up until the time they got married, and never had sex, they wanted to, they wanted to go according, they said, to the Bible, and not have sex, and they had a wonderful marriage, they had kids. He is now engaged, and it's the same thing. They're going to wait until they're married, right. you know, and have have kids. What do you think about it? I mean, yeah. not have kids, well. but not have kids, but I have sexual well, relations. Well. <laughs> do you believe no, no, that no, people no. should that have sex prior to? That is me. Did you describe me? Wow. I, now, I said it happened. <laughs> You describe what I want. <laughs> you describe what I desire. Because I want all those other things to be in place. And I've never pushed a woman to say, let's, you know, let's just see what that's going to be like. No, no, no. I wanted to wait till I, till I was married. I identified a few people, and I was willing to wait. But the sister's like, i got to check this out. Because it might not be what I need. And I have to respect that. No comment. <laughs> um, but you made it, but you made a point that, that hits home with me because you know we're talking about you know we're young, single, we're dating, and so um, I was 25 years old when um, when I got the chicken pox for the first time. Mm-hmm. My niece gave it to me, my little right. cute 30, you know, but she's 38 now. But anyway, she gave me chicken pox, and you know these girls that I was dating. All of a sudden, you know, I mean, I have them everywhere. And they would, like, disappear. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, oh, you know. were electric. Right? I mean, seriously, I looked like a leopard, man. I mean, they, it was bad. And one person stuck around. And that was, you know, who I'm married to right now. Because, you know, if you can stick around me when I'm looking like this, and, you know, I'm telling you, man, it was bad. It, you know, even my mother came over and was looking at me like, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, my mother was the one that, uh, you know, kind of went in on me about my behaviors then told me, like, she's the one. Stop messing up, okay? And mom was right. Wow, that's right. That's a great story. Mom was right. <laughs> Happy okay. Yes. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about Michael Jackson, that situation. Mm. When they were in that movie at Sundance last month or the month before, you know, so many people they were crying and all this stuff. I watched it. Did any 
of you watch um, Living Neverland? No, I didn't see it. Uh, I watched it, and I watched the guys talk. And we knew it was kind of irregular for a grown man to be, you know. In fact, Michael Jackson said himself, he said, what's wrong with sharing your bed? You know, sharing your bed is a good thing. It's like, who is talking to him? Right, right. You know? I mean, where does that, where does that thought originate? That, you know, you sleep with, you know, children that are not yours. Well, he settled, uh, he settled a suit or two about that. You mm-hmm. know, uh, rather than go to court with a couple. But, you know, he did go to court. He had been arrested. And the two gentlemen, or at least one of them, who was uh, part of this documentary, said, no, they have never had relations. Well, one of the things they said, one guy said, <laughs> Michael had told them, people are going to try and destroy us, so you can't t- tell about what we do. I don't know whether to believe it or not. You know, it could be possible, could not be possible. And, uh, but, you know, a lot of things led people to believe that. He, then he, he married Lisa Marie Presley, and, um, I remember he gave her that big kiss on television. Remember? Yeah. He gave her a big kiss and everything. And I, I think for a lot of people, they said, who? Michael, you know, he had a love. But then that didn't last. And the next thing you know, Michael has kids. I don't know. It was just kind of an odd thing. But the point I'm trying to make is the gentleman, two things. I don't know if the gentlemen were telling the truth or not. Number one. Number two. They're not really talking to their mothers. Their mothers knew. My mother was practically in the same house when this happened. But how do you let your child? I, I told my son last time we were talking on the phone. Oh, there's no way I would have met you in, in some man's bed. Let me just say this here. We didn't allow our daughter, as of this moment, to stay at another person's house overnight. Uh-huh. Period. Right. So how do you entrust your kids? Again, it goes back to what I said. Some parents, I would have to do a lot of security. Right. Because it's like, how, how do you, do you sell, sell your kids? Put your kids in jeopardy if you do that. I don't, listen, I don't even trust my brothers to like that. Right. It's family, but I just don't. And why put my daughter in that situation where she has to defend herself, whether she's 3, 7, 11, 16, why? I just can't see us doing that. Right, absolutely not, but I don't know if the, guy, the guys, Michael Jackson is not here to defend himself. The guys are saying he did this and that and they don't want money. Somebody wants some money. Oh, yeah. And there's some money being generated there, from all of this. Come on. There is money. Yeah, there, there's money. HBO paid to, to show the film. There's, pl- there's plenty of money here. It's like Lifetime paid to show and you know, and, and that's you know, like you said, uh, that's problematic for me because you know, at the one point in your life, you said no, it never happened, and now that the, that Michael was gone, and you know that um, the state's worth two billion dollars. Yeah, you know. And, yes, that's that's important. And so now, you know, you're you know looking at how do I cash in on the story. Now, there's one housekeeper, Michaels, who said she never saw that behavior. You don't know. You just don't know. But you don't know, but you don't put yourself in those situations either. And that's something that I have counseled, you know, all my young men about. I mean, even think about this. Just during the course of a basketball game, I tell my guys, don't look like you're fine. Don't give the referee an opportunity to call a foul on you because you look like you foul. But sometimes people foul and then they look guilty. And so they didn't grab right. it must be him. You but, know. but my thing is, don't reach. If you reach, then automatically they're going to say you foul. Now, you may not have touched anybody, but reaching, you know, right. I'm not going to call it. In life, don't put yourself in situations that, you know, could potentially And that's be what foul. we're talking about today. R. Kelly, mm-hmm. um, Michael Jackson, Jesse Smollett. Uh, yeah. That, and, you know, people are still defending. And this, what if, and what about so-and-so? What about so-and-so? We're talking about what about Harvey Weinstein? What about this and that? I don't care about that. I think that there's none of us 
including myself, would not put myself in Gerald's way. I've dated somebody. I've, you basically have to wrap yourself in a bubble and not have any contact with anybody else because you can, you can, you can defend, I'm sorry, you can offend people without even trying. So we live in a time now where the, those offenses will come back to haunt you if somebody decides to be vindictive. And if you've got a lot of money, you've got a greater chance of it coming out. Think about all the basketball players. You know, what about the fact that it's like with Little oh, Chamber, Little Chamber, Little Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson. Think about that. So everybody comes to say, say if you haven't been alive for 20,000 days, how did you sleep with 20,000 women? That was all crazy. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a call. We have Jean on the line. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, expert subject. And uh, let me go first to the Michael Jackson documentary, which I did watch. And I watched the interview with um, Oprah after the second, uh, you know, thing of it that they hit. Okay. But the way I saw it, I think it was bigger Michael Jackson. I think what Oprah was trying to accomplish, at least with her interview process, is that this kind of file thing is a big deal. And I do believe that she was trying to show parents how to see how they manipulate people and how they can get into your family, get into your head, to the point where you don't even think there's anything wrong with it. Okay? These parents, I can't believe it. Like your guests were saying, you know, let your little seven-year-old boy sleep with a grown man? Get out of here. Right. I don't care if it's Michael Jackson or who it is. That is right. something's wrong with that. Okay, the same thing with the R. Kelly people, like their daughters go over there and stay with him. I mean, they they have responsibility there. But but I think the Oprah thing was showing us is that how prevalent that is and how easy it could be for some people to just, you know, get into that and get taken advantage of like that. And it's always money, 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 money. And all the situations they thought, okay, well, I got a talented kid, and here's Michael Jackson, he's going to put him on the stage with him, and we're going to be billionaires, blah, blah, blah. And the same thing with R. Kelly. Uh, he was going to have a girl behind him as a dancer or put her out there, kind of like he did on me, you know, because he was married to her. She was a real young girl, like 15, 16 or something. 15. So people see those dollar signs also. But I must say, before I conclude here, that pedophilia is really pervasive in our society right here locally. Yes, We had is. Charles Pugh. Channel 2 News anchor, who got himself into the school system with father and little boys. We had, uh, what's his name, uh, Eddie Saab, uh, Baptist guy. Right. We had this, this growing kids over there, the old dormitory over there, just getting them ready for the picking. And you have the Catholic priest that everybody knows about. That's been going on. We found out about that about 20 years ago. I mean, and you got teachers, female teachers gone with little sixth grade boys. I mean, this stuff is all over the place. Yeah, and what we want to concentrate on is, too, you know, the parents pay, you brought up the parents, the parents pay, uh, they play a big part of it, a very big role, because as a parent, I have daughters and I have a son, no way my daughters were spending the night. Absolutely not. Very rarely, very rarely. And my mother didn't, uh, I think I spent the night over somebody's house once. It was a pajama mm-hmm. party. My mother was very funny about that. Oh, yeah. Because you don't know who's there. And many, no. many women in this city, in the world, they know about people who have tried to molest them. That's right. I know myself. You know, and the, the, it shows you, I was, I was in a garage. And my father and uh, my brother and I, we rode our bikes over to this family's house. And I don't know what I was doing in that garage. I went in that garage, and one of the men who was in the house with my dad, he came out, he came into that garage. And he said, "Uh, come over here, and stuff like that. And he started zipping his zip. I ran Mm. like the Dickens, but then I was scared to tell my father because right, my right. father would try and kill, my, you know, it was right. you know, so a lot of times people are twitched in between. I, I, right, and you can see why those little boys might have not wanted to say anything about Michael Jackson. Okay, to him, he was God. Okay, they, they just loved him and they weren't going to say anything. And a lot of us have been uh, attempting that role station and stuff. With people like you just said, Brenda, and it's not an easy thing to go and tell. It really isn't. You know, it puts a lot of pressure, especially on a little kid. And you think about what okay. can happen 
important to everybody, you know. So you carry that. You feel that you're strong sure enough to just carry it. Yeah, and you just, just leave it where it is. You know, so I don't think it was all about money this time. Of course, there's money in it, and it always is in terms of HBO and all that. But the bigger message was, and I think the people need to get out of this, is to watch your kids. Right. Watch who you let them be around right. and everything else. Take care of your business. You know what I mean? And, you and, and don't worry about who it is. If it's the preacher, the baker, the candlestick maker, I don't care. The nicest man in the neighborhood, the nicest lady in the neighborhood yeah. could violate your child. And Michael Jackson, they had recordings of phone calls. They say they were phone yeah. calls from Michael Jackson to the yeah. families, and he's talking like a little kid and yeah. all of this. And I don't know, for me, that would have made me suspicious. That's creepy. How about the fax machine he brought and put the little boy's room and was sending them millions of messages? You know, staying on the phones five and six hours with somebody's little boy. What is that about? That's ridiculous. No, Papa's where's the parent? That's what I'm talking about. So in terms of anybody suing anybody, including R. Kelly, if they let that 13 or 14 year old little girl go to them, that's on them. Yeah. Because we had to this well, is it's on him too. a child's brain development is not together at 13 or 14 years old to make those kind of decisions like that. And a lot of times, sometimes the girls don't know what's going to happen to them. They know they can be around this person that they admire, but they don't yeah. know. And people start grooming kids. Early. That's so, what the whole thing was about. The key word is grooming. R. Kelly groomed his. Michael Jackson groomed his. Oh, and let's not forget about that coach of the Penn State. Oh, Raving yeah, all those, yeah. with, with all those yeah. uh, team members up there. Right. You know, this stuff is pervasive. It's there all is, over. Yes. Yes. And it's time to pull the cover off of it. They pulled it off the Catholic priest. Let's pull it off of everybody else, too. And do you think, I think that that and the knowing that people will tell or less afraid to tell right. might have to shape the per- perpetrator's moral compass not to do it. Yeah, they pulled it off the Catholic Church, but who went to jail? Nobody. And that's the sad part is, is that disclosure is the first step, but someone should be serving time as the next step. Then Absolutely. They, 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 they exposed Eddie Long, too. He didn't go to jail either. See? You know, that's what I'm saying. How many of them really did go to jail? You know? Because people don't want to believe it. They don't want to believe it. They always inject something in, oh, it's about money, oh, it's about this. I don't believe the kids when they say it. But this is real. It does happen. And it's happening a lot. And uh, the Oakland County Child Killer, uh, they, there was a documentary on a few weeks ago about it. Oh, yeah. And they were talking about this camp that they had for boys, uh-huh. bad boys. And we didn't even know on an island. You had to take a, a airplane to get to it. And boys were molested there. They, had yeah. boys that, they were molested there. There are a lot of places that we don't even know That's about. That's right. That's right. So it's time to pull them. It's time to open that can of worms and don't make any excuses for them. I don't care if they're Catholic, they're Baptist, or whatever they are. This stuff is all over the place, you see. And and that's why I like that they brought that documentary out. I know a lot of people didn't like it because they were emotional about Michael Jackson. He is a genius. He is a beautiful man. He did wonderful things for people. He could sing, dance, everything. But he molested no boy. And I believe he did. He had no business with them in his bed. There's nothing you can tell me that could convince me that he had any reason for that other than to be bothering them. Well, you know what, Gene? This guy is talking. It started a conversation, and hopefully it's going to protect some kids as a result of it. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks Thanks for your call. Right. And that's, you know, but what I'm looking at, too, is what I always looked at. What do people think of us as people? I have always, you know, um, I was talking to a Jewish woman yesterday, and she was the same age, and we were talking about when Kennedy got killed, and how we, I used to say, God, I hope he's not black. You know, things it's happen. Did. 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 The guy that shot, the guy that shot already, you know, I'm at work, and first, that was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, I hope that wasn't a black person. Yeah, because you know, if, if, if a black person would have been the one who shot Kennedy, we would be here talking today. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, Good this point. country's in a whole different bag. Right. But, you 
know, a lot of times we do, and then she said, we were saying, she said, we were saying, we hope he's not a Jew. You know, so everybody's trying to protect us. We have Yvonne on the line. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Uh, So I just do it, and it is 
the show is over. We got another call. People wait until the end to call in. And uh, um, thank you, guys. This is a lo- this is going to be a conversation that ongoing, ongoing, ongoing con- conversation. Because I did want to get into Jesse Smollett a little bit, but we didn't get a chance. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Being frank. 